So let's understand this. All of England, all of the English people at prison are suffering the worst type of living crisis. The English papers aren't spilling it, but they're fucking crying. So when the English papers, uh, when the English people turn over to the Maltese News and see that their government has just reduced their cost of living by at least 100 euros a week, Maltese buy a lot of food. When they see that the Maltese now are now saving 100 euros a week because of this one move on groceries, the English people are going to say, you motherfuckers, in, to London. London will say, you motherfuckers, to Valletta, to Malta. But the English people will be rotten, their eyes red, and they will think, oh, this, these people are God. These Maltese are godlike. They've just taken us out of this dark age. Us believing that the economy is not arbitrarily set by the elitists in this country, the establishment. We know there's some mechanisms, but we weren't aware that it was that bad where they are physically controlling it and depriving us literally controlling how we can go ahead and can't because Maltese buy much more food than the British but or the English proper but the English still buy a lot of food so if what happened in Malta happens in England the people will save about 75 pounds a week probably more that's a lot of money for the everyday person in England who bleeds for that money they could do so much with that money. 90% of the country. And here's the thing. London don't have an answer. They can't turn around and tell their people, oh no, we can't afford what Malta are doing. Our hands are tied. They've got the most money in the world going through their stock market. And although Malta can kick every British business out of Malta, and not only not suffer for it, but get, be even better for it, because the Italians are just fucking waiting to take over. Oh, they they can't wait. The Spanish, even the Spanish, they know exactly what happens when their presence, when when their presence lands on Malta in terms of the business world. Okay, cause the British can't turn around to Malta and say, "Oh yeah, we'll just kick the sand in your eyes and fuck off," and haha, we've got your back. That'll be the funniest fucking thing they've ever done. Because somebody bigger and even better will come. And they're waiting. The Spanish and the Italians are fucking waiting. I think even the Greeks are. They want a presence on the Maltese island. And they're welcome to have it. <laughs> so. <laughs> they've... London's screwed. Pure and simple. Because. This is why. British business on Malta is still predominant. Meaning Malta's public, not private, not private, public. Malta's public, which is what the government goes off. Malta's public success, econ economic success, is almost completely in line with Britain. Because Malta's business, oh, the British businesses on Malta today, there's, there's probably more now than ever. They're everywhere in Malta. Fucking every second business is a British business. If not every fucking... If not two out of three. They know, Malta for the British was like heaven for business. So they're still in Malta making their money. As they deserve to. The English proper. But that's the thing. The public sector. The, the public sphere, I should say, in Malta. The government. The economy. That's fueled by all that. So if... The Maltese economy, which is pretty much fueled by business, uh, by British business, if the Maltese economy can afford to pretty much give the uh, 